Amen. We appreciate our kids. We appreciate most of all the people that help look after them. Amen. 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 We appreciate that. Uh, this whole month, we've been dealing with one subject. It's been making the right decisions. We've been making decisions that affect us, our family. Uh, you'll remember in the book of Joel, chapter number three, this has been our verse that we have started our messages off with each time. Joel chapter 3 verse number 14 says, Multitudes and multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. And we have been talking about how that decisions are part of our life. How that each day we have to make. Why this morning I've made some decisions that I'm regretting right now. <laughs> We had brotherhood this morning, and I promise you I made some decisions this morning that the preacher's regretting right now. That's a joke, y'all. I eat too much. <laughs> Amen. But see, that's what I want us to realize. Decisions are part of life, and we have to, we have to learn to make the right ones. Yes, we have to learn that there are certain kind of decisions, Miss Linda, that we cannot avoid. They are some decisions that Brother Grady, that we cannot get around. We just have to make them. I'm going to prove to you a point. Uh, when you come to a dead end, you have to make, like down here at the end of the Mount, uh, Chronic Town Road, you have to make a decision to go to the left or to the right or straight forward. You've got to make that decision and nothing happens in your life until you make that decision. How many of you have ever got behind somebody that couldn't make the decision? <laughs> Amen. Hey, listen to me. I, I, I'm being honest with you. Life is full of it, and a lot of folks don't take it seriously. But the decisions that we are making are affecting our world. They are affecting the things around us. I'm not joking. Amen. We've got to get a grasp on this thing because the decisions I make, and I'm not going to linger long here, but the decisions I make as a young man affect me as an old man right now. Never dreamed the way that I, the decisions I've made, Mr. Hunt, that when I was 20 years old would have such a great effect on my physical being at the age of 57. If I had my time to go over, I would have made some better decisions. Made some better decisions. See, folks don't like to be put to the point. They like to go around things. They, they don't like to have to make a final decision. Amen. But this morning, I want you to turn with me. And I want to talk about some folks this morning uh, in the book of Ruth. If you will, this is some very familiar scripture. And I, I, I'll do my best to do exactly what God wants me to. Amen. We're just going to be in the first chapter. You Bible readers, if I've read this and you know, hey, what's happened, you know that uh, where we're standing at. But I want you to know there's three characters that we're going to be talking about. Naomi, we're going to talk about Ruth, and we're going to talk about Oprah. And each one of these folks have had to make a decision. Had to make a decision. Amen. That affected not only their life, but it affected our life. The decisions that are made in the first chapter of the book of Ruth, Brother Albert, you, 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 you can uh, tell me if I'm wrong, but they were in the geology of Jesus Christ coming. Yes, sir. The right decisions had to be made in that chapter in order for things to work the way that God's got it planned. And today, I want to tell you there are some decisions that you have to make that affect what God's got planned for you. This morning, we're going to talk about a certain type of decision. Certain type of decision. And what are you talking about? A decision is careful consideration of two things. And coming to a responsible agreement on what is the best. And you making a choice and making a decision. In our text this morning when we read, we're going to read the three people. And they've got to make a decision on which way they're going. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. 
And I want to tell you what, their decision is not going to be made on what's in their hand. But we're going to preach this morning, God being our helper, on making a decision of faith. Amen. Making a decision of faith. Why is that so hard? Because the Bible said in Hebrews 11, 1, that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You're going to make a decision on either trusting in God and believing in Him or saying no. Amen. Now listen to me. Preacher, that, that's not hard. Well, we're going to get into this and we're going to find out that it's not always easy to make a decision by faith. Amen. It's not always easy to make a decision by faith. Amen. And I'm getting way ahead of myself, but I know I've got a bunch of folks in here, and I did a study one time. There were 12 disciples in the ship when Jesus met them on the water. There was only one water walker. There was 11, bo uh, there was 11 dry boat talkers. Amen. Them of them, they sat there dry. They didn't know what it was about. But one made a decision that he was going to step out on faith. He made a decision by faith. Jesus said, I could do it. I'm going to go do it. Amen. Jesus said, listen to me, Trinity. I want to talk to you this morning that we are fixing to go into making a decision on faith. Amen. And I want to tell you, I woke up this morning and it's just like God spoke to me. He's in this building that we're fixing to build. Amen. God said, I've got it tucked here up. I've got it paid for. The people are coming. Amen. Somebody said, Preacher, you've lost your mind. No, I'm being honest with you. I made a decision to go all the way with God. I made a decision to where if nobody else wants to. Amen. And God said, I could and I would. Amen. Hey, listen to me this morning. Preacher, what are you getting at? You worry and you worry. When you make a decision by faith, you are turning it over to God, saying, God, I'm going to go with you, and I'm going to let you lead us, and I'm going to let you help us. Amen. Amen. Let's get into the Scripture. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but I really, I really want to help you make a decision of faith. Decision of faith will not consist of you knowing all the facts. A decision of faith will not consist of you knowing how it's going to turn out. But a decision of faith will consist of you knowing Romans 8 28 that says all things work together of the good to them who know the love of the Lord and are called according to His purpose. Amen. 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 Hey, you pray just for a little while and we'll get into the message. Amen. And then we'll let you go. Because there's a lot of us that can make a decision as long as we can see the end of it. Yes, sir. As long as we can see the end of it. Amen. Hey, listen to me. Let's look and read. Stand with me. And we'll start reading in the fourth verse. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Ophrah and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelled there about ten years. And Malam and Chilin died also both of them. And the women and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how the Lord had visited his people and given them bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her. And they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each of her mother, each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that you may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy, peop unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters, why will ye go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb, and that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters, go you your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight, and should also bear sons, 
Would ye tarry for them till they were grown? Would ye stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Ophrah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth claved unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, nor return to from falling after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if all but death part thee and me. And when she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. Let's pray. Lord, as we come to you just one more time, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for the blessings of life. We thank you for being so gracious to us. And, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you have just, just watched over us and took care of us. And, God, I thank you for the way you made me feel this morning. And, God, I ask you now to forgive me for the things that I've done. And, Lord, for not looking after things better. But, God, I just ask you right now, Lord, if you would, to deliver me one more time. That, God, that I might be able to deliver your words to your people. We love you and we thank you for everything that you've done. Go with us. Lead God and direct in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You can be seated. Somebody said, Preacher, why is it so hard to make, why is it so necessary to make a decision of faith? Because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 6, it says, but without faith it is impossible to please God. Amen. So this morning we've got to learn to deal with decisions that have to deal with faith. Amen. Now a decision of faith will be require you to not, you won't be able to see what's out in front of you. Amen. But you're just going to have to uh, listen to me. We'll do it again real fast. Stand up, Shane. Come right out here. Come on, hurry up. We did this once before. I want you to face the crowd. Amen. Now, I want to show you something. Amen. Shane, when I tell you, I want you to fall just flat on your back, right back to me. All right, Shane, fall back. Amen. Look at that. See that? Now, that's what I call having faith in somebody. And he made a decision to let go. How many of you know once he let go, he could not stop himself? He could not catch himself. There was no coming back. Oh, when he let go, he let go. Amen. Now, listen to me. I want to explain something to you. When you make a decision of faith, it's when you decide to let go and to put the matter into God's hands and let God be the one that does the work. Amen. Listen to me. I want to talk to you. Hey, listen to me. Naomi is in a bad way. As we have read in the first chapter in a span of a little over 10 years, hey, Marcia, she has lost her husband. She's lost two sons. She is not living in her homeland anymore. She's no longer in Bethlehem, but she has moved out. She's living in the world. She's living in what God said was his wash pot. Hey, Amen. And listen to me today. Brother Larry, she is in a bad Fix. Oh, but she has heard from a far country oh, that God has visited her people oh, one more time. Amen. And now that he has given them bread, there is no longer a famine. And she is going to step out. Listen to me. It's just hearsay. Oh, there's nobody been there that has come back and told her all she has is good news from a far country. Hey, I've never seen Jesus. I've never seen him. Oh, with a natural eye. Hey, listen to me this morning. Hey, listen to me. There's so many folks that hear the good news. 
uh, each Sunday morning. Uh, Miss Piggy, they're here, the good news of help from the far country. That God is wanting to help them. That God is wanting to reach out. Hey, listen to me. Naomi has got a message. Amen. Uh, God is calling her home. Uh, he said, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden. He said, and I'll give you rest. Oh, God, listen to me. It's telling Naomi, uh, you can come home if you want to. Uh, you can come if you want to. Uh, now listen to me. Naomi's got to make a decision. James says there's so many hearers and not doers. He teaches us, amen, not to be hearers only, but doers of the word. There's so many folks that hear the good news, but never do anything about it. Never making that decision of faith uh, to leave the aisle where they're standing at or where they're sitting at and walk down the aisle and trust God, amen, uh, with it, amen. Listen to me. I, I don't want to wonder, and I, I know folks have been up a while, but Brother David, uh, Naomi has got the news and now she has decided, I'm going home. Amen. Oh, that's all on page 153. Uh, Lord, I'm coming home. I'm tired of sin and straying. Amen. I'm tired of wandering. I'm going home to where I know. I know I belong. Amen. Listen to me. And Naomi is on her way. And now she's got two daughters-in-law. And one is Oprah and one is uh, Ruth. Now listen to me. I'm going to tell you what somebody said, preacher. Uh, it's, it's not hard. You, uh, uh, if we can make a decision, Brother Jimmy, I want to tell you, some of us have a hard time just trusting God from week to week. Yes, sir. Amen. A decision of faith is where you say, God, you got this. You can handle this. I'm going to trust you with my life. Amen. Listen to me. And I see this. And I see Naomi as she begins to start her way back. And listen to me. At the beginning, and I'm hurting. Amen. But at the beginning, how that Oprah and how that Ruth both. Y'all read the first chapter. In the beginning, they're both. Amen. Brother Albert, they're both ready to go. They're both ready to go. But before they leave, but on their journey, when they get, get started, all of a sudden the devil gets them to sit down and look at what's in front of them. And all of a sudden, oh, Oprah, amen. She is like so many Baptist folks today. Amen. They can't see out in front of them. God ain't got it laid out. Oh, but thank God to the roots in the house. That says it don't matter what's in front of me. It don't matter what I got to go through. It don't matter who told me on. It says, where you go, I'll go. Where you live, I'll live. Where you die, I'll die. You know what that meant in the Word of God? I'm not going back to the way that I used to live. I'm just going to go and I'm going to stay. I ain't making no plans. Amen. Listen to me today. And I see them as they start their journey. I see them as they... And I'm going to tell you what, Brother Chad. The Bible clearly states that I'm no genius and I'm no scholar. But these women love one another. The Bible talks about them weeping and the concern that they have. And all over that inwardly part of her wanting to go with her. They only... She had a desire uh, to be with her. Oh, but that Part, just couldn't let go. Just couldn't turn loose. Just wouldn't let it go and go with her. Amen. Amen. Listen to me. Now I'm going somewhere with this. There's a lot of folks in here got a lot of great expectations. Amen. And you know what? You're fine. Amen. Listen to me. And listen, and I'm going to tell you something. This is the most giving church. I love you. But this is a form that I can express myself this morning. There's a lot of us a tithe as long as we can see money coming in. There's a lot of us that are give as long as we got more than we need. Amen. As long as things are in bolts or in heat, we'll give. But I want to talk to those roots that say, I'm going to give where I got it to give. I want to talk to them little widow woman in Zarephath that when the man of God said, go make me a little bread. And she said, all I've got enough is to make a little cake. And he said, go ahead. And then she makes a decision of faith. I'm going to go ahead and give it to God. And the little barrel never run out. It never run over, but it never ran out. Amen. Do you know your 
decision of faith could be what's keeping you from reaping the benefits of God. Your decision of faith, your decision of taking that step out of that comfort zone uh, could be the what's keeping you from reaping the benefits of what God's got for you. Amen. Hey, listen to me. Hey, I want to be honest with you this morning. Hey, listen to me. I have been right where Oprah stands, Brother Jimmy. I have been in her shoes. I want to do what God says. I want to be right with God. I want to follow God. But, Brother Jimmy, I can't see what tomorrow holds. I don't know what's coming up. I might lose my job. I might, something bad might happen to me. Hey, man, do you know? Hey, listen to me. There's so many of us that worry so much about tomorrow that we can't enjoy the day. Amen. 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 Listen to me. Poor Ophir, she has got to make a decision. Now, is she going to make a decision of faith or is she going to make a decision that looks right to her? Hey, listen to me. And I, I begin to write things down in the Bible that, I, that God showed me. Noah made a decision of faith. Noah was warned by God. The little preacher hit on it this morning. And God warned him by His grace that it was going to rain. But you know what? Reading your Bible, it had never rained before. It had never come a cloud. It, you know the, how the ground was watered? By the dew that would come up out of the ground. And for the chair, God said, it's going to rain, Noah. And you got to build an ark. My God, do you know what? Listen to me. Noah didn't have any investors. Somebody say amen. They wasn't a man on earth, amen, that walked by and give him a dollar to help him. They wasn't a man that walked by that bought him a box of nails. I don't know if they had nails there. Hey, listen, don't tell me. I'll have somebody get me at the back of the church telling me they wasn't no nail. Hey, I'm just telling you right now. Hey, man, they wasn't an investor one, Brother Oliver. Oh, but that old man of God, he said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a decision of faith, even though it ain't never rain, even though it ain't never tell a storm. Oh, I'm going to build this hard oh, because I'm going to step out on faith. I know that one day I'm going to have to have a place of safety. Hey, somebody says, I've never seen him. I've never touched him. Hey, listen to me. Hey, man. Hey, listen to me. Old Thomas said it on one of the greatest meetings they ever was. And he said, I, I won't believe until my eyes have seen and my hands have touched. And Jesus appeared unto him. And he said, here am I. Here am I. Thomas, touch me. Oh, but that ain't what I'm after. He said, Thomas, blessed art thou. Amen. Because I have seen with thy eye and touched with thy head. He said, but blessed are those. Amen. Oh, that have not seen. Amen. But still believe. I'm talking to the Holy Spirit. Oh, that's willing to step out on faith. That's willing to make a decision. God, I don't know how you're going to do it. Oh, but I know you're going to do it. to make a spiritual decision. Uh, somebody that needs to make a decision of faith. I don't know how your faith is going to make it. Oh, but God said you're going to make it. Amen. And all you've got to do is be willing to make the right decision. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen to me. You pray. I'm feeling better. Amen. Listen to me. Hey, I want to tell you something right now. Hey, what a decision. A wave between two bounces. A one right here. On one hand, I don't see a future going with Naomi. Hey, the Bible said the things that we can see are temporal. Amen. Oh, but the things that we cannot see are eternal. Amen. I'm so glad I'm not building my wealth up on this side. Oh, but everything that I've got is invested on the other side. Amen. Oh, you say, preacher, what are you talking about? I might not ever be a millionaire. Oh, but I'm putting up stuff on the other side. Amen. Hey, I'm going to a play. Oh, the crap that the sing the song. I don't you want to go. Amen. I'm so glad you might not believe, but I made a spiritual decision, a decision of faith that there was a heaven and that I could go and I was going to get me a play of why it was being offered. Amen. 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 Making a decision.
decision of faith. Amen. Amen. Noah built the ark. And for a little over 120 years, he built that ark. Every day he made the same decision to go to work. Every day he had to make that same decision. No doubt they were people that ridiculed me. No, people, no doubt they were people. Hey, I got I want to get, let's get down to where it really happened. They folks called us idiot. They called us a dumb for coming to the house of God. They say we're fanatics. They say that we have lost our minds. Amen. Come in getting excited about a God that we cannot touch and a God that we cannot see. They called me a little ridge runner. Amen. Oh, because I get a little excited that I know, listen to me today, amen, but I made that decision. It was mine. And can I tell the world something of what happens if I get down to the end of the road and there is no God? I won't be lost to faith because I'm happy by the time of my life. Oh, but what's going to happen to you oh, when you get down to the end of the way and you find Amen. To the world's eyes, what we're doing now is fanatical. Yeah. Yeah. We're just a bunch of radicals. Amen. Lost our mind. Amen. They can't see no use in what we do. Amen. Do you know I can't make nobody believe it? Amen. I can't force it on nobody. I got friends, amen, that don't believe in God. Preacher, I wouldn't associate with folks that don't. I want to. I want to be around them. I want to be over where they're at. I want to meet them at Walmart. I want to meet them at the Waffle House. I want them to see me pray. I want them to see me be the man that I'm supposed to be. I want them to see me as a man that knows that there is a God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Ophrah said, I'm going with you. I'm going with you. But then, all of a sudden, Naomi said, Ophrah, let me tell you what's going to be like. I'm old and I have nothing to offer. I have nothing to offer. Said so She looked at Ophrah and she said, what if I was to be married today and have children in less than a year? Would you wait on them until they were old enough to marry? Would you keep yourself? And she said, well, listen to me. Where I'm going, so y'all ought to get a hold of this, and I bet this real good. Hey, man, do you know where she was going to? She was going to a place where she wouldn't be really accepted. Yeah. Uh, Ruth said, they only told her, said, you're going to Bethlehem. And Moab, them Moabites wouldn't really like it over there. Uh, they weren't supposed to have nobody. Amen. I'm so glad somebody loved me in spite of me. Amen. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that Jesus, the Bible said in Romans that while we were yet sinners, said Christ died for me and you. He come and gave His life. Amen. Hey, I'm trying to help somebody this morning. Somebody might have been sitting here saying, "Preacher, I wouldn't fit in. You don't know me, but I live an ungodly life." I don't live like I'm supposed to. I don't do the things that I'm supposed to. I know you think I do. I know you think everything's all right. But preacher, I need help making a, 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 a decision of faith. I need to sell out and go with God. Noah built that ark. And that, boy, I'm going to tell you what. After a hundred and some years, when it rained, that man was so satisfied and so thankful that he had made the right decision. Look, Jason, let's try to stop you. Let's think of this. How many days he put up would be laughed at? Think about it. How many days when he walked by and said, That man, nothing. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something today. 
And I, I'm going to say this, and I hope everybody get a good hope. There are people today that says that this right here is no good. They say this is just a joke. They say that this Bible right here, that it has no meaning. Amen. But I'm going to tell you what the Bible said. Let every man be a liar, but the Word of God be the truth. And the Bible says that when the heaven and earth shall pass away, but God's Word is going to stand forever. Amen. I've got after everything said and done, when the last decision is made, this is what we're going to be standing on right here. Amen. 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 This is what we're going to base everything that we believe on. Amen. Listen to me. Listen to me. I begin to think, amen, of people that made a spiritual faith, decision of faith. Do you know what that is? That's accepting God. That's accepting God on His Word. That's accepting God on His Word. Hey Amen. You remember Moses when he was by the Red Sea and God told Moses, said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Moses had to make a decision of faith. Now let me tell you, sometimes our decisions are based on what we see. How many of us have ever made a decision saying there ain't no way out of here? Amen. How many times has the devil walk, ever walked up to you and said, I got you. I, I'm going to fix you. I'm going to break you. Amen. And you look at the way it was. Listen to me. There were so many times people have to make a decision of faith. And that decision depends on whether they wind up in bondage or they wind up as free men. Moses said, stand still. People crying out. Leave us in Egypt. Take us back to Egypt. I've never lived in a world today where folks are so easy to turn around and love. Amen. Hey, Brother Jerry, you, want, you can have a church full as long as things are going good. You can have a church full as long as things are going just the way folks want. Yes, sir. Amen. But you've got very few folks that are hanging there with you when things turn upside down. Right. Folks are very easily... You can influence folks real. The devil can come in to our church. And we've got a good number this morning. But you know it wouldn't take one little bitty split in the middle, Brother Albert, to make things just go all to pieces. Amen. Amen. And you know what? He tells me, he says, I'll have you right back to where you ain't got but 10 or 15 folks. Amen. Yeah. And you know what? That used to worry me then. It used to worry me that I couldn't eat and I couldn't sleep. You can notice I ain't been worried about it a while. Because you know what? Because you know what God told me? He said, I didn't call you. He said, I just want you to go over and preach. He said, you preach what I tell you to. You do what I tell you to. And if I only leave you with 10 or 15, that'll be the 10 or 15 I want you to work with. And when y'all get in one mind and one accord, I'll add up to it. So I've come to the conclusion I'm not preaching for the crowd. I'm preaching for a God that is able to do all things. I don't worry. It's all for me. You make a decision on your own. You either make a decision to follow God or stay home. I can't help it. Amen. I'll call you. I'll worry you. I'll come to see you. But the decision is yours. And what you do will affect you. Amen. Amen. I'm tired of putting up with folks that tell me, preacher, you do that and I won't come back. So what? <laughs> anyway, I'm tired of going home worried about this and coming or that and coming or this and coming. I love you to death. I'll come see you. I'll beg you. I'll do everything I can to keep you in church. But honey, the decision's up to you. Either you want God or you don't. So make up your time to divide and realize sometimes you got to make a decision of faith. Amen. And that's as lonely as I can put it. I love you to death, but I can't make your decisions for you. Amen. Amen. I had to go through this. My boy, 24, the youngest one I got. He makes his own decisions now. Amen. That don't mean I don't try to influence him. <laughs> but the hardest thing ain't sharing that I ever had to do was turn him loose and let him make it. 
Oh, I still want to grab him sometime. <laughs> Amen. I, I ain't lying. Amen. Hey, but listen, the hardest thing this camera I ever had to do was to turn my son, my both of my children loose and let them make their own decision. That don't mean I don't love them. That don't mean I don't care about them. That don't mean I don't worry about them. But I've come to the point to where they've got to make their own decision. And hey, one day I might not be here. I want them to realize, hey, brother, I would help me. That's a real God. The God that looked after me. I'll oh, look after him. Amen. Oh, listen to me, somebody. Amen. And when you got that's why I do. I come to that grip in this church right here. Brother Zach, if God don't want you here as much as I hate to see you leave, you just go on do the will of God. Oh, my daddy's got to stay where daddy's got to stay. Hey, Amen. I got to do the work that I got to do. I got to fix my mind up that God comes first and everything else is second. Hey, Amen. And God said, if I put him first, all these other things shall be added into it. Hey, I'm talking about investing in a God. You got to make a decision of faith, amen, to step out and reach up and let God do His thing. Amen. 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 You'll sleep, buddy. <laughs> amen. Do you know what? Go home on Sunday night and sit there and go down the roads and try to figure out who ain't there. What we can do to get them back I think a pastor ought to be that concerned. But a pastor has to come to grips. He's only a pastor. Amen. Hey, listen to me. I, let me tell you, I'm only the under shepherd. Uh, the great shepherd is above. Amen. Uh, and let me tell you what. Hey, hey listen to me. I'm just watching over the few, few sheep that he's given me until he comes back. Amen. 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 And I don't want to worry your patience. But somebody needs to make a decision of faith. Somebody said, somebody said this. Somebody said, if I don't work all the time, hey amen, I'm not going to make it. I have that same theology. Hey amen. Piggy tells me all the time, you work all the time and we ain't got no more than we usually got. <laughs> ain't it amazing you can work 80 hours and wind up with the same thing you would have if you had 40 hours? Somebody here needs to make a decision of faith. You need to put God in your life and say, God, I'm going to let you be first. I'm going. Now listen to me. Old Ruth told Naomi, he said, I'm going with you. He said, I know I can't see it, but I know that God's got something out there waiting on me. Anybody here believe that God's got good things waiting on you? Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it what? More abundantly. Anybody here believe that God wants good things to happen in your life? I mean, God wants to open doors. You've got to make that decision of faith. You've got to allow God to do His work in your life. How many of us are tired of trying to make it on our own? Listen, I've been worried about this rally coming up. We try to build a building and it's going to cost us some money to do this route. But you know what? Hey, I quit worrying about it last night. God don't give us money to sit on. And you know what? Sometimes God won't give us any more until we use what we got. I know I got a lot of folks in here that don't know what's the use of doing what we do. Just come along for the ride. Maybe you'll get saved somewhere along the way. Blessing. Now. Maybe you'll realize it ain't for us, but we're spreading the word that there's a God and He's real. And the more folks, listen, folks, we got to make a decision of faith. Either we gonna trust Him or we gonna believe in ourselves. Because I guarantee you, there ain't nobody in here, including the preacher, put this church back on its feet. I've been here almost eight years and everything that this church has tried. God has blessed and God has touched it and did miraculous things. And it's because folks made a decision of faith. They would just leave it to God and let God do it. They might go. Amen. Now I got to hurry. 
Don, you didn't want to give me but a little bitty bottle of water. <laughs> Don is easily influenced by these other men. <laughs> I said, give the preacher a little bottle of water to him short and sweet this morning. <laughs> Amen. They ought not feed me that soft and ham. <laughs> Just, I didn't eat that long. <laughs> That's good. I didn't lie. No, I'm telling you. Now, this is where I'm going. I'm going to close. If we had to put a tag on you, are you an Ophir? Are you a Ruth? <laughs> Which one are you? Are you the one that's going to make a decision on the things that you can see and the things that you know? Or are you going to be a Ruth that makes a decision on the things that you hope? Oh, Ruth said, I'm going to the land of a real God. I'm going to a land of a forgiving God. I've got scripture to back that up. The reason Emelak left is because God had cursed the land and they couldn't have no bread. But now God has forgiven them folks and all of a sudden bread. We can preach a message on the forgiveness of God, couldn't we? Amen. Amen. But what I'm talking about is making a decision of faith. Are you ready to follow God? Are you really ready to turn your life over to Him and sell yourself out to Him and say, here I am, God. Here I am. Are you going to be like Oprah this morning? Now, put you quiet. I find that Ruth made a decision to go to the land of a real God. And I find her becoming the queen. I don't hear the Oprah anymore. I don't hear of Oprah anymore. She was eaten up by the wolves. She was left in the land of Moab. I'm going to a place where I'm going to get everything that I ever need. Amen. Going to a place, the sun, the word, it's going to be worth it all. And I'm not going to tell you, tell you here and tell you that things are going to be easy. When Ruth got to Bethlehem, you know what she had to do? She didn't have a job. She didn't have that. Do you know what she did? She was on skid road. She was on poverty road. She would take her sack, Miss Dawn, and she would go out and get behind the reapers. And let me tell you what she would do. When they would pluck the corn and when they would get the wheat and the what was left on the ground, she would get that and she would have to get up the scraps. That was what it did. But she went to a place. She had walked out on faith and she walked into the land of a kingsman that loved her. I said, man, I used to be an orphan, but now I'm a millionaire. Amen. I love you this morning. But old Ruth, can you see her over there? I know things might not look the way. See, the world wants me to look at what I've got. The world wants to look at me and says, well, you ain't got nothing for you, oh God. All you got is a little old house and a car. Amen. Uh, that you ain't got much. Amen. You ain't. But see, they don't see what I've got. Amen. Hey, listen to me. Uh, they looked at Ruth and they said, Ruth, you've made a long journey. Yeah, now you're over here begging for what you can get. Amen. But the king's been looked down and old boy has told his men. I'm so glad anybody here ever picked up a handful of purpose. Amen. Anybody here, you know what that is? That's God's provision. Amen. Oh, when I didn't have a job, God let the angel put down a handful of purpose. Amen. Preach on that. Yeah. Bless you. Y'all ain't never picked. Y'all thought the handfuls of purpose were only in the book of Ruth. Amen. They was over where I lived that time. I didn't have a job and we couldn't pay the light bill. One of the king's men I dropped a little bit yeah. right there uh, so I could walk by and pick it. Anybody here want to pull over to the side of the road, get out of the car and throw your hands up and thank God for the handfuls of purpose. Yes. Amen. When you started your business and you didn't have two nickels to run together and God sent away or to run in the body or to, oh God, that person. Amen. Oh, that's a handful of purpose. Amen. Amen. You can't do a thing. Oh, I just pray. I just pray this morning. Amen. I'm so glad that I made a decision of faith. Amen.
stupidest person around. I'm going to tell you what, brother. I've seen enough handfuls of purpose in my life to know to keep going on. Amen. Amen. There's been times I didn't know where it was going to come. Amen. Woo! Glory. Amen. I can see old Ruth. Amen. Why she'd be walking down one road with me, but by the time she took the next road, I'm going out and she loved that. And I lay those handfuls of purpose. What's not scattered? Oh, but I'm laying with piled up. Amen. That's all right. Somebody said, I want me some. It's up to you to make that decision. Oh, Ruth said, I'm going with you. She said, quit talking. Quit talking and let's go to walking. <laughs> What she told Naomi, she said, shut up, woman. She said, I've made my mind up. She said, I've done decided. Dad, this world ain't got nothing for me. Moab don't got nothing to offer for me. I didn't have nothing until I met y'all. I didn't have no home. I didn't have Until no... <laughs> I met God, I didn't have nothing. Anyway, until I met God, I was homeless, helpless. That's all right. You know, sometimes I, 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 I just hurt myself. Listen to me. It's time to quit talking and walking. I'm serious. And thank God for them handfuls of purpose. Hey, I, listen to me. Folks, can't nobody make that decision but you. Can't nobody make that decision but you. The preacher can't make that decision. I can't make that decision for my boy. If I could, I, I, I'd try to make the right one. But I can't. I can't. No, Ruth told him, said, Naomi, I'm going to reach you. And I've read the book of Ruth, and I've always sat down and tried to figure out what made Ruth live, what made her leave. And you know what I believe she left for? Her? I believe she left looking for a better way of life. Amen. I believe she left looking for a better way of life. I believe that Moab had gotten the best of it. If you will read and study out of Naomi's boys, they wouldn't much to offer. See, weekly, little individual, mind you of two pigs, not real manly people. Study their names out, look up and see what they did. Brother Larry, it means that they fragile. Now, Ruth was a looker. Amen. You don't know that preacher. But then you better read the third chapter or the second chapter of the book of Ruth because it was her look that caught the king's eye. Come on, man. Yep. And so when she met Naomi and her boys, she was looking for something other than what was where she lived. I'm so glad that I come to church and I found something that was better than what I had. Well, Mike, what you got now, is it better than what you used to have? Is it better than the drugs you used to do? Is it better than the alcohol you used to drink? Somebody help me today. I mean, tell my young folks, hey amen, it's better than anything the world's got to offer. Amen. Tell them, Brother Oliver, anything that we've ever tried, Jesus is better than it all. Amen. 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 Don't put me on the spot. Why, you wish you was a little fella, you? <laughs> I need some folks to stand up and let these kids know. Well, Paul, you want a good life? Then make a decision of faith. Make a decision. Don't go back to alcohol. Don't go back to drugs. Your daddy can't do it for you. You tried it. Amen. I'm preaching to plain as dirt, son. God's got something good for you, but if you can't make the right decision, you'll wind up in the same gully. You'll wind up in the same place. But if you'll choose, woo, if you'll choose God, Amen. God will lift you up above the shaft. He'll put your foot on the rock. He'll establish you going. He'll get you off. He'll give you something. He'll be proud of 
him. I love him, amen. I want him to know his choices when he makes it. You know, folks want these nearly mad little preachers that walk around scared to say anything, scared to do anything. Amen. I'm so glad. That's the reason I'm glad God lets me work. I, I'm preaching and I go to work. You know what? Hey, I, I, I just love God. Amen. Amen. I know preachers that have a hard time preaching the truth because it affects their check. It's okay. Are you all open or are you Ruth? Am I Frankie Ruth Green? Am I Frankie Ruth? Ain't no wrong with that. I'm talking about Ruth being this one that makes a decision. It don't matter what nobody else does. Listen to me. She is not influenced by her sister-in-law. See, I, I got to find me a getting off place. But there's so many folks here that are influenced by the folks that are sitting around them. You know about that one and this one. Now, I hope Ruth said it. don't matter what she does. I know what I need to do. I know what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do today, I'm not doing it for anybody else but me. Amen. 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 If we want to be talking about it, how many times does peer pressure influence our decisions? When I was young, Paul, I was so influenced by peer pressure that I would actually do things that I knew were wrong. Got saved when I was 13, but I cussed when I was 17. <laughs> Amen. Because I was around Miss Ashley, a bunch of boys, and I didn't want to be like a sissy. You know, y'all don't know how it is. When you're walking around with a bunch of fellas your own age and they throwing out words about a foot long, and you all want to be the one that stands there and just... You, you want to be as big and bad as that. But I had to come to a grasp. I had to come. I had to make a, dispute, a decision of faith. Either I wanted to be for God or I wanted to walk away. Amen. Yes, sir. Decision of faith. Either we're going to give it all to God and follow Him or we're going to stay where we are. The church, either we're going to give it all to God Give it all for God, or we'll stay where we're at. My oldest boy talks to me. He talked to me of a church one time that was blossoming. That the doors, they were putting cheers out every Sunday. And they was going to build. And all of a sudden, they decided they couldn't afford it. They're crowded. Left. All of a sudden, things we can't afford not to keep going. We can't afford not to keep going. We can't afford not to. They see me folks preaching. You think that building's gonna bring folks? No. We can't sit down on God. We got to keep working. We got to keep pushing forward. We got to make a decision. As long as we have breath, we're gonna work for God. Which one? Am I going to be a root? Or am I going to be an open? Which kind of decision? Are you going to make a decision of faith? Or a decision of what you see? What are you talking about, preacher? Ophrah got left in the land of Moab. Ruth stepped out on faith. She claimed to Naomi. And Naomi, she followed Naomi into a land of milk and honey. She followed her and she found himself a king. And she humbled herself. And he lifted her up. Give us a song, okay? Somebody. While they come. You don't make a decision. The decision is yours. I know y'all think I'm crazy, but they used to be a little cartoon and come on TV. His name was Captain Flynn. And they were five kids that had five wings, heart, wings, fire, earth. So y'all remember that? Maybe I'm not just on the one. And he would come and help them. But when he leave, he 
would always tell them, the power is yours. The power is yours. You'll live in Moab for the rest of your life, or is it a good morning to go to Bethlehem? Is it a good morning to go to Bethlehem? Is it a good morning to go to Bethlehem? You say, where you see me, I'll go. What you tell me, I'll do. God, 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 help us to make the right decision while we stay. While we stay. Are you looking for a place to worship God in spirit and in truth? Hello, I'm Frankie Green, pastor of Trinity Baptist Church in Auburn, Georgia. We would like to invite you to be in our service with us. Sunday school starts at 10 with morning worship at 11. Sunday evening worship begins at 6 and Wednesday night prayer service at 7. We are a King James Bible-believing, fundamental, independent Baptist church reaching out to those who need a special touch from God. For more information, you can visit us at TrinityBaptistAuburn.com or on Facebook at Trinity Baptist Church Auburn. We welcome you to Trinity Baptist Church where you will become part of a family.